Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up buttons that can be used in different ways uh, based on how you set up conditions or custom states. And this can be nice to do um, so you don't have to create a lot of buttons and hide and show buttons depending on the scenario of your app. You can use one app and then based on conditional or on custom states, you can go and drive different workflows in your app. So as an example, so right now I've got this um, user, Joe Walker, logged in. And so when I click on log out here, workflow goes and logs them out. And then you now see it says log in. And so just go up here to log in. And now you see that it says log out. So this is one button here. And basically on a condition, uh, I can change what the text is here for log in or log out. And that will drive different workflows. And another example I want to show you here is with a custom state. So I've got a start button here or a button here, I should say. And I've got a group here with a text field. So one button. And every time I click it, it just basically cycles through different steps and so forth and complete and then it just resets to the beginning again. So again, one button and this is a nice uh, feature with custom states so that you can go uh, and have one group and then, or even multiple groups, but in the example you'll see in a moment on uh, the design, it's one group and then I just change the content within in that group. So let's jump over to the design here and we'll start with the login. So on the login, uh, I have a conditional. So in this, this scenario here, I'm not using custom state. When we get up to this button here, I'll be showing you how to do it with a, uh, set it up with a custom state. But for this one, I'm just basically using the current user status, whether they're logged in or not. So when the user is not logged in, uh, login is the default value. So right here, login. And then when the current user is logged in, I want to have the text say log out. So let me just quickly show you how to do that. So when current user, and then scroll down towards the bottom, is logged in right here. And then the text, log out. And so that's how you set that up. Now let me go to the workflow. And on this, there's actually uh, two, two workflows for this. There's two conditions. So on this one here, I've got uh, when the button login is clicked and current user is logged in. And then in this one here, when the button is clicked and current user isn't logged in. So you can see right here only when, and I can change this, is logged in or isn't logged in. So when the user is logged in, all I'm going to do is log the user out. And that's as simple as coming to account and log the user out. Now, when the condition is only when the current user isn't logged in, I'm going to go through and collect the input username and password and set them up and we reset the group so then this way by resetting the group all the inputs get set and initialized and I'll, I'll give a pointer to in in the notes bef below to what other video this is actually this workflow is for another video um, that I've created so I'll put the link in if uh, if you're interested in seeing that it's for setting up different types of users uh, student user and teacher user uh, but I'll put the link in below uh, so you can see that if you're interested. Uh, so again, basically all we're doing here is we've got two, um, two workflows, uh, and then the one it'll execute based on this condition here. And to and just actually while I'm on this, if you're on a Mac, uh, if you on your 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 button your tablet um, uh, pad, if you click two fingers on you could do a copy here and it's a right click if you're on a PC and then if you do the same thing again you can do paste 
and then you can see that it's it's copied it so user is logged in user is logged in so that's just a quick way of copying these uh, workflows and that's basically all it is for the, for this login here I'm just basically leveraging the fact that the user is logged in or they're not logged in now for this next example I've got a, another button here and I've got this group and it's just a simple simple group nothing too too fancy let's say you get a group here and I just changed the color background and then within the group I have a text field and then um, for this custom state uh, index button one reuse let me get to showing you that so if I go to index here and clicked on the element inspector I've got button one reuse and then it's of type text because I'm going to I'll show you in a moment I'm going to be typing in the text field the default value I want is start and to create a custom state I'm just going to go and show you quickly here text of type text and create I also have a video on custom states I will uh, put the link for that down below as well so I've just got this uh, custom state button one reuse and now if I come over to this button and what I have here is this is a dynamic value so it's index button one reuse and that's where I get this value start that was the default value so if I just kind of quickly go over here and show you know start Instead of that, let's just say I, I put end. Do a refresh. And bubble is refreshing here. It's going a little slow today. And there, end. So I'm just going to go back, do an undo. back to start all right so I've got the def default value of start for that and there's no other conditionals the only conditional is this button is hovered I just changed the the color uh, if you're curious how to do that um, define another condition when this button is hovered and then I just change the background color like that all right so let's get to the workflow okay for this one and I tried to color code there's actually four of them so again copied and pasted these I created one and then copied the rest of them so we've got conditions on all of them and it's on the custom state here only one index button one reuse is complete and then I've got another one for when the value is start. So these, these fields, and this is important to note, so I typed these in. These weren't values that were provided to me, so I had to know what values to put in here. And you see that it's a capital S on this. If I put a lowercase s like this, this is different in value to bubble than the capital S version of it. So make sure when you're using custom states and you're using a text field for text values and you're typing them in, make sure that you spell it correctly and that you also capitalize as, as needed or else your workflow won't, uh, won't work appropriately. So I've got this next one here. So when the value is start, uh, when the value is step two, got another one for when it's step three, and then the last one for when it's complete. And go to let's go back to start. So when the values start, I just have a simple uh, set state here to change the value um, of um, of it. So I'm just changing it to step two. And then when it's step two, I have a workflow that changes it to step three. And then when I get to step three, I just have a workflow that changes it to complete. And then when it's complete, I just reset it back to the initial start value. 
Yeah, so just to show you how to do the values. So you go under element actions, set state. The element is index. And then custom one reuse. And then the value. Again, make sure you spell it correctly and you have the uh, right capitalization. And this one actually, yep, so start. So those are identical. All right, I'm going to delete that. And that's basically how you set this up. Uh, let's see the other thing that may to help you out. So I'm just going to do a copy and add another one in here. Okay, so on this one here, just so you, should, so you know, so the only when, and then scroll down to the bottom, pick the page, the page is index. So again, page index. And then button reuse, and then is, and then what was it for this one? Was it uh, start, I think it was? There, and that's how you set that up. I'm going to delete that because I've already got this workflow right here. And then I'm um, not sure if I showed on the button, but let me just quickly go back here uh, for button. And then we get this insert dynamic data. Again, scroll down towards the bottom and scroll back up a little bit. Index. And that's it. So then this will show the value of the custom state. Let me do a refresh here. We'll run through it one more time. So again, this is a nice way, instead of creating lots of different buttons, so we had like three or four steps for, for this workflow, or three or four different workflows here. Um, so instead of creating multiple buttons, I just have one button. And then using the custom state, I just change the value um, that's shown in the button. And then I can just work through the different workflows. And then for the logout and the login, it's just based on the, the condition. So I didn't have to use, I could have used a custom state for this one. Um, but instead, I just used the state of whether the user was logged in or not. Uh, hopefully, this, this uh, video was helpful to you. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Please subscribe again to my channel here uh, so you get notified of upcoming videos. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.